Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. How are you? Uh, I started talking a little bit there early, but I was just so excited to see you. Hi, I'm Andrew Hockrattle. I am your host and guide for this Pride Challenge. We will be hanging out today talking about the one and only Keith Haring, one of my favorite artists, and we'll be looking at some techniques today in Photoshop. So we'll be working in Photoshop today, pretty much exclusively, not a lot of Illustrator. Um, we'll be using brushes, we'll be using Blend If, and then we'll also be using some blending modes in there, as well as Adobe Stock. So if you want to open some links, stock.adobe.com is a great place to start. And you can find all the other links down in the description. We have those Keith Haring brushes for you as well as your source file to get started today. All right, let's hop in and talk about what we're doing. We are doing some pride challenges. If you want more content, you can go to behance.net slash challenge slash design. And right here, you can see all of the pride challenges that we have done. If you've missed any of them, go back, hang out, make some cool stuff with us. So with that, down in the source, sound, bleh. Down in the description is your source file. Boy, we're, we're getting there. Um, and I do want to hold place, hold place, hold place. Where, where's my, hold on, where's my Keith Haring? There's some eyes, hold please, there we go. Here it is, let's talk about Keith Haring, y'all. All right, so Keith Haring, one of my favorite artists. Um, he's just an eclectic personality, and his work was insanely influential. You might have seen this style um, by, uh, I believe his name is Mr. Doodle, um, hangs out and does work like this now. So Keith Haring. Uh, Keith Haring believed that art is for everybody, just like Adobe, right? Creativity for all, all means all. Herring believed that art should be something that liberates the soul, provokes the imagination, and encourages people to go further. That's what we want to do here on Adobe Live. He thought he brought his art into public spaces by painting in public. In public, by ooh, it's, it, we're getting there, y'all. We're, it, we're, it's a rough intro. All right, here we go. He brought his art into public spaces by painting in public spaces like New York subways. One year before his death, the Keith Herring Foundation was founded to. Uh, engage in education, prevention, and care to respect, uh, in, with respect to AIDS and HIV infection. So uh, this is some of Keith Haring's work. You're probably familiar with it. Lots of color, lots of fun. Um, and this is some of his more illustrative work. We're gonna be working in this style, but taking it into the street art. We're gonna take it into the New York City subways um, and really show you how to make it look like you're doing digital art graffiti. So a little quote to inspire us from our friend Keith. Art should be something that liberates your soul, provokes the imagination, and encourages people to go further. That's what we want to do here. Um, and yes, Howard Pinsky in our live chat is saying words are hard when streaming. You're telling me. Um, all right, so let's hop in. And just for reference, if I'm a little discombobulated, if I look a little sweaty, my water and AC are out of my apartment. So we are thriving this morning. Let's hop into Photoshop here and get started. Um, and sorry, before we hop into Photoshop, I wanna give you a great resource. And that resource is this page right here. Maybe you know our friend Kyle T. Webster. Uh, he works to create some Keith Haring brushes. Uh, and these brushes are absolutely incredible. And this is what we'll be using today. So there is a link down in the description for you to download these brushes, but you want to grab these and just click on download brushes. Um, once it downloads, you'll be able to double click and open it in Photoshop, but we're going to be working with these chalk brushes. We'll be working with the marks a little bit. We probably won't use a Sumi ink too much, a little bit of felt tip and definitely using paint and paint drips. So all kinds of awesome work that you can create. Wow. Look at this art that has been created. And this is what we're going to be inspired by today. So now let's hop into Photoshop with those brushes and start playing around and kind of seeing what they do. Um, your source file will look like this. It will have a little information for you on there. But what I want you to do is you're going to download that file. And I'll show you how to do this real quick. We're just going to click on download right here, download the brushes. It will download right down here as an ABR file. All you need to do is click. It will open Photoshop, and now when I right-click with the brush tool selected, so B, when I right-click, it will have those Keith Haring brushes right there. 
So the Keith Haring brushes are right in here, and you can see I'm just using a mouse, but if you're using a drawing pad, that's fine as well. As we start to paint with these, you can see the beautiful textures that are coming through um, and all the things that you can create using some of these brushes. I love these markers. Look at that. The chisel and the subtle little texture that you get in these markers is just so good. These brushes are absolutely incredible. Uh, and here is the chalk brush that I think is one of my personal favorites. So. We're gonna start with the chalk brush just because it's the easiest to replicate the style. And then we'll go into the New York City subway and show you how to take your art onto the subway. Now to start out, I am going to create a chalky background. And this is so easy to do in Photoshop. We're going to make a new layer, hitting Control Shift N for a new layer. And we're gonna name this chalkboard. And from there, we're just going to fill it with black using the paint bucket tool, fill with black. Now we're going to go to filter. We are going to go to render and we're going to render different clouds. Now, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna create right this right here. It's a little bit uh, like smoky effect. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna change the background color to just a light gray. This is, this is my easiest way to create um, a chalkboard pattern. So a light gray right here, and we are going to fill that background with the light gray. Then we are going to take this cloud that we have rendered and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply right oh looking good right so we change the blend mode to multiply and from there we're just going to add some noise so i'm going to filter noise add noise and we want to add maybe 10 percent, just a little bit of noise in there maybe 30 percent there we go yeah sure let's do 30 percent, and then we're going to go to filter and blur and just blur that out a little bit maybe by two pixels or so so maybe we'll just one pixel. There we go. And now you've got a nice kind of chalkboard pattern and you can play around with the opacity here to kind of show how much or how little you want it to show through. And maybe this background gets a little bit darker for us. There we go. So we've got that nice kind of chalkboard text. Now I can create a new layer, Control Shift N, and this is going to be drawing. And we can use that chalk brush right here, just doing chalk, or we can do chalk square, um, and we are going to change it to white right there. So now when I paint, you can see it's got that nice kind of chalkiness to it. And even here, that chalk, you can see that it is drawing right through. So we are going to use this chalk, and then we'll be using some blending modes to really make it look like it's on the page. Um, but I'm gonna kind of just use a reference. And if you see me looking up here, I'm just using a reference to draw the Keith Haring dog. Uh, if you haven't seen the Keith Haring dog, it looks like this. Um, it's a very famous piece of his. And so I think that it'd be the easiest for us to work with um, because I'm working with a mouse and not any kind of uh, tablet, it's gonna be pretty easy. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to hold shift as I click. So I'm gonna click on one point and then hold shift to click to the next point. And it's gonna draw these straight lines for me. So I'm just gonna kind of try to replicate that Keith Haring style. And again, I'm just clicking and not having to do, I'm just holding shift here and it actually will follow all of the lines that I am clicking. It's just connecting those points for me, super quick and easy way. If you are not familiar to illustration um, or you're not using a tablet, really, really easy way to work in that Keith Haring style because it is all pretty much straight lines. So we've got one more leg here coming down and then it looks like it comes up here a little bit and then the mouth connects out here and up there. There we go. So we've got that nice Keith Haring dog that's actually looking really good. Um, and we're gonna scale that down hitting control T and then just scaling that down a little bit right there. So it looks pretty good to me and let's add some of these signature kind of Keith Haring, uh, he would always have these kind of motion lines. And these, if you're interested, are called indexes. An index is something that gives information. So the information that these lines are giving is that there is sound happening, right? So it's giving us information. So this is looking very Keith Haring already, but I want it to have a little bit more texture to blend into that background, right? It's looking a little bit like just pushed straight in and sitting on top. The way that we're gonna do that is to right click here and go to blending options. Now we wanna mess around with the blending. So it's gonna open up this blending options panel here. And this is what we want. We want blend if gray. 
So using this layer, if we pull it back, you'll actually will take a while to get there. Oh, it's not gonna change at all, actually. There we go. So blend of gray, because it's white, it's just going to say, hey, if anything's not full white, then blend it. Everything's full white, so it doesn't matter. Now, the underlying layer is basically telling us, hey, if it is black, then start blending it, right? So you can see as I pull this to the right, it's blending it in just a little bit more, but it's too sharp. So we can hold Alt or Option and grab one side of this and start to kind of pull it off to the side. And you can see there that it's starting to be a little more gradual. There we go. And as you pull this through, you can see that it's going to pick up those grays and become much more gradual on the actual texture of the background. So we hit OK, and I was just holding Alter Option and changing that back to forth. You can see that it's picked up a lot of that texture. And the cool thing is because that is a blending effect, as I move this around, it will continue to blend with that background, giving you that nice, cool, chalky texture, right? Really cool. So I do wanna show you how to use this effect on a subway tile, right? It's a little more complex. I wanted to do it on chalk first, and now we're going to do it with some different brushes, add some paint splatter, and add it to subway tile. So we're gonna come over here and go to stock.adobe.com slash free, and we're just gonna look for a good subway picture. Um, I love this one right here, just because it frames really well for us to put a dog in there. Um, this is probably the best one, yeah. So I'm just going to license for free, very easily, very quickly. And I do have it syncing to my Pride library, so I don't even need to download it. I don't need to do anything. I can come in here, and I'm simply going to grab my libraries, which is right here. And it should sync, let's see, where's that photo? Um, smiling girl, water flowing. Uh, there it is, Chamber Street. So I'm just gonna click and drag that into my composition. There we go. And now we've got our subway tile. Uh, I'm going to expand this all the way out so it's nice and large and fills the space. And just align it right here. All right, so we've got our Keith Haring dog looking pretty good, but I do want this dog uh, to be in color and I also want to use a different brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave it right here where it is and I'm gonna create a new layer and grab a different brush. So I want the brush this time to be maybe a little bit more of a uh, kind of spray paint. So as I scroll down here, you can see that there is a spray paint brush right down here. And as I start to draw with this, I'm gonna use kind of a hot blue. A lot of times Keith would use these very vibrant primary colors. So you can see there, it's looking very, very spray painted, which I absolutely love. And I'm just gonna trace over the illustration that I already have using a new brush, and you'll see it come to life in a different way. So again, I'm just holding that shift. It looks like that brush is a little too big. You can change the size right here by just using that slider. There we go. So I'm just gonna click and again, just go over this illustration that I've already created to kind of use this new brush to get that graffiti texture and pattern. The cool thing about this brush is it's already set uh, with a lot of settings that are randomizing, that are giving us different sizes of spray paint, different textures, different roundness, uh, and it's all set for you so that you don't really have to worry about any of that yourself. Uh, you can go into the settings and change the settings if you like, but these are so well done. Kyle did such a good job that you probably don't need to at all. So we're gonna add in our little bark lines over here, looking good. And now I can turn off the illustration that's underneath. So now we've got this nice spray paint and we've got this background and we're gonna go ahead and just scale this down so that it fits onto this subway tile. All right, so we scaled this down. I love it just sitting right there. So we do want this to blend. We want it to have that texture and kind of play around with the tile that's in the background. We could change the blending mode to multiply, but then again, it's just gonna look like it's sitting on top still. So I'm gonna turn on multiply, but then I'm also going to use that trick that we just learned by right-clicking and going to blending options. And we are going to change that underlying layer holding alter option, just right here, start to pull that to the right. All right, let's pull all this and see how far it goes. There we go. So we're starting to get some 
Let's see if we want to pull it this way. Yeah, let's get some of the subway tile coming through. So I'm gonna pull this way and that way some of the lights will show through and we'll start to get some of that texture. There we go. So you can see that it's kind of just creating that nice texture for me and it is showing through these elements on maybe where it's been uh, kind of aged away over the years. Maybe somebody tried to clean it off just using that uh, piece right there. So let's actually show you the difference. So the difference between using blend if and not using blend if is right here. So this is what the normal would look like. And then here's that blend if. So you can see that it's pulling through a lot of that texture, a lot of the grime, a lot of the kind of variations that you can see on that tile using blend if. So super quick and easy way to do that. Uh, now I do wanna add on some maybe paint drips because this, uh, this has some paint drips to it. So I'm gonna grab our blend if layer and just zoom in here and we're gonna grab the brush tool hitting B. We're going to right click and there are some paint drips. So let's, let's look here. Um, let's do, there we go, drip three. So we're gonna click here and I'm just gonna click and drag and oh, that brush is very large right now. So we're gonna bring that all the way down. There we go. And that's more the size that we want. So we can just click and drag along here and you can see that it's really pushing in those paint drips, right? Giving us a little bit of extra oomph. And if we want to have more, we can turn up the smoothing. Um, let's turn up the smoothing to 50 and see what happens there. All right, so we're just clicking and I'm just dragging uh, to add some paint drips. Maybe I do wanna add some different drips so I can come in here with the drip two and change that size down and add in some more drips here. And you can see that it actually will stack those drips up as you start to work a little bit further. So maybe it's dripped here and I can use the brackets again to add some more drips. Uh, maybe it's kind of done a little bit of extra dripping over here. Of course, these need to have some big drips on them. And then maybe there's a little bit more happening in here. All right, so let's zoom out. So look at that, it, is, it looks like it is painted and because we're using that blend if feature right here, it's definitely overlapping onto that kind of tile. You can see it's almost knocked out completely on this black because it is using that blend if to really knock it out a little bit. Now, if I wanted to, I could create um, and kind of fill in these shapes. Uh, I don't really want to with this graffiti style, but something that I could do is I could add a little bit of extra texture, right? Maybe I wanna add a little bit of extra splatter to this. I can come in here and I can add a mask. So it's already doing the blend if, but if I add a mask right here, add a layer mask, and then I grab my brush and I'm going to do that spray paint, but I'm gonna do a very large open spray paint this time. We're gonna change the color to black, which means it's gonna knock it out. And you can see as I start to paint over this, it is going to knock out those pieces, right? So it's a very large brush right now, but if I use the brackets to scale it down, you can see it's scaling up and down there. We can come in here and we can kind of just click around and it will take away little bits and pieces of our work. All right, so we're just adding some extra texture in here. Give it a little bit of extra oomph. That looks good. If we want to change the brush settings, you could change the brush settings here. And you can see the size is happening right there. But then we also have things like smoothing. We also have things like our uh, texture scattering, all that stuff. So you can lock these so they don't change, but maybe the scatter, we want to have more. So you can click and just drag this all the way up to nine and it's gonna make this much more dense. It's gonna make, make it much more dense. So you can play around with all of the different settings to find uh, if you want to change these brushes to achieve something very particular to you. So there we go, we've created a street art kind of spray paint look on this uh, tile. And not only have we done that, we also have done that chalk effect by working with the chalk right here. So we've got the chalk effect for Keith Haring, but then we also have this nice kind of subway tile. Now, if you wanna do a true kind of 
Keith Haring style, let's add some color to here. And the cool thing about using blend if is that we can kind of augment this color. And I believe that it is going to allow us to stack. It may not, um, in my brain, the way that this is going to work is great, but it may not work that way, let's see. It will, cool. So that's what I thought is, it is going to work in a way that regardless of what you change the color, it will continue to blend that out, right? And so looking at some of Keith Haring's work, he would always have this kind of dark outline and bright, bright, bright background. So let's do uh, some more augmentations here. We do want this to definitely be a dark, dark outline. I never wanna go all the way to a full black, but we're gonna hit okay here. And then the background, we wanna change this to maybe a red, but I wanna keep some of the texture. So instead of changing any of these nice, great textures that I have with the card with the uh, chalkboard, I can add a gradient map here, right? And this gradient map, we can pull in just a little bit because it's very subtle. We maybe wanna pull into a darker blue by just changing this color to a darker blue. Now, as I pull this to the right, you'll start to see some of that texture showing through, right? So we can see that texture showing through a little bit right there, and we're gonna hit okay. And then I wanna fill this maybe with a very bright red. And the easiest way to do that is because we have drawn this through is to just paint underneath it, right? So we're gonna create a new layer, Control Shift N, and we're going to grab a bright red. And from there, we can use another one of our brushes. We probably want to use maybe a marker brush. Uh, where's a felt tip? There we go, marker square. And you can see as we paint this on, it's getting some really nice texture in there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to go underneath and just start painting in, holding shift and just clicking through. So because we've used such a bright brush, um, it is going to give us a little bit of that overlap as we draw through. So this will end up actually looking really, really cool uh, once we go back through and fill all the other pieces. You'll be able to see each kind of stroke that we did. So it'll look like it's hand done, even though we've done this fully digital. And maybe here, right, we wanna kind of just paint in these extra pieces. And you'll be able to see where in theory this marker had gone across each of those pieces. So check that out. You can see all the texture in there, which is kind of cool, kind of adds a little bit of something special to our design. Um, I do want to add in one more thing, and that is going to be a floor. So we're just gonna add one more layer. Mm, you know what, let's just draw it on here. Let's draw it on our layer with the piece that we have. All right, so we're gonna use that, oops. Oops, oops. We're gonna use the Sumi ink one more time. Oh, let's use the chalk brush. All right, so we're gonna use the chalk brush one more time and we're just gonna paint in a nice little floor here, kind of going through. And we're gonna fill in this bottom with just white, again, using a different brush. Uh, maybe this one, I still wanna use that chalk brush. We're gonna change the color to white. We're just gonna create a new layer. And again, we're just stacking here, trying to create a little bit of dimension. And we're gonna bring that all the way around through all of those pieces underneath those legs. And actually, I want this to be yellow because we gotta keep those primaries for Keith. So we're gonna do a nice kind of full yellow look in there. And we're gonna paint this in Looking good. So we've created that, looks great. And I do wanna add in maybe some little stripes here, something fun. Keith would always have these little uh, kind of accent lines. And there we go, some fun, right? So really, really great. I loved this lesson, I had a great time. Um, go ahead and post using the Discord links down below, post your work. Hopefully you can make something inspired by our friend Keith Herring. <coughs> <coughs> Y'all, I almost made it through the stream. We almost did it, Oh, just barely, all right. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you've enjoyed our series of pride challenges and hopefully you can create something that is inspired by our friend Keith Herring. Have a great rest of whenever you're watching this, day, week, who knows? And I will see you again very shortly for uh, some more great content here on Adobe Live. Bye.